Are there wedding traditions and do I need to do them? Let's dive in. Hello lovely brides and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren, wedding planner and owner of Bluebird Creative. If you are new here, thank you for coming. I provide a weekly dose of wedding planning goodness for the stylish bride. So make sure you hit subscribe and the bell to be notified every week when I post a new video. Okay, wedding traditions, wedding etiquette. Where do you even start? And do you even need to do them? By the end of this video, you're gonna know what they are, what you wanna do, and what you don't wanna do. Let's go. To make this easy, I'm gonna go through this in order of occurrence from the beginning of the planning process through to the end of the wedding day. Okay, we're gonna start with the most awkward one, which is probably a tradition in its own right in the UK. We're gonna talk money. And we know the Brits don't like to talk about money, but we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it, it's fine. Okay, so money, when it comes to a wedding, who is paying for the wedding? Are you paying for the wedding? Is your family paying for the wedding? Are the groom's family paying for the wedding? Have you got family members and friends that want to gift you a supplier, gift you some money towards a supplier? You need to find out in the most polite way possible who's paying for the wedding. Hopefully these people will step forward and say to you, we'd like to buy you this for your wedding. We'd like to put this towards your wedding. That is the first tradition because traditionally the father of the bride gives the bride away and therefore her family pay for the wedding and they celebrate them giving her away to her new husband and her new family. So that's where that comes from. Okay, so moving on, we've got invites. Now we have talked about invites before in a previous video, so I will link that up here or here, one of these, I don't remember which one it is. I'm linking it. Let's talk about etiquette when it comes to invitations. Traditionally, wedding invites aren't actually sent out until eight weeks before the wedding date. Now, if you watch the video, you'll see when I suggest to do that. There's also etiquette when it comes to writing the invitation. Who is the invitation from? And that again comes from who's hosting the wedding. And who's hosting the wedding comes down to who's paying for the wedding. So you make sure you do point one before you get to point two. Simple. Another point with invitations is that it is deemed inappropriate to ask for money as a gift in your invitations. Now, I'm sure we all know nowadays that people would rather have, or it has become a trend, let's say, that brides and grooms would rather have money or a donation towards their honeymoon as opposed to a specific gift. Now, I personally think gift registries are coming back. Okay, people, they are coming back. But it has become a trend for people to ask for money. And that comes down to the fact that people haven't wanted gifts because they've been living together already. And traditionally, people didn't move in together until they were married. So then you would gift them presents to their new, for their new home and their new married life together. Whereas now, most people do live together before they get married. Not always, but it is much, much more common to do that. Anyway. Going back to wording with not asking for money, and people do, there are so many ways to do that now without it being rude. Check out Pinterest, check out Instagram, you can find poems that ask very kindly that you would rather not have presents. And if they want to give a donation towards your honeymoon, that would be lovely, or make a donation towards a specific charity that you've chosen. There's lots of different options, so get a pinning and have a look. Okay, so let's move on to the ceremony. Ceremonies are obviously traditional because the whole, the whole thing is a tradition, okay? But I'll just go over a couple of the traditions within the ceremony. So first of all, I bet you didn't know this, there is the tradition of who walks down the aisle first or when. Did you know that in the UK, it is tradition for the bride to walk before the bridesmaids? In the US, it's tradition for the bridesmaids to walk before the bride. Personally, I'm a fan of the US version because I think the bridesmaids get their own shining moment and it's then a build up for the bride. Everybody knows the bride's coming. Plus then the bridesmaids get to support the bride and get to watch her walk down the aisle instead of just watching the back of her walk down the aisle. So, eh, I don't know, that's my personal preference, but you can do either now. Traditionally, bride goes first in the UK, but you do you. I went last. 
I had my bridesmaids go first. And let's not forget who walks down the aisle with the bride. Traditionally, it's the father of the bride. The father of the bride is the person that is giving the bride away. Now, unfortunately, that isn't always possible for some brides, but you can have an alternative. You can choose somebody else very special to you. You might choose to have your mother or a best friend or a brother. So that's something you would need to consider as somebody will need to give you away. Okay, so let's move on from the ceremony and we're going to talk about the receiving line. Do you know what a receiving line is? It is not something that happens very often. Some people still do it. Out of all the weddings I've ever been to and worked at, I've only experienced it once. It was supposed to happen twice, but due to rain and unforeseen weather, um, we made the decision to cut the receiving line to get the guests into the marquee quicker as to not get wet which I think was quite a good decision and I think everybody was quite grateful of that one to be fair. So receiving line basically is a way for the hosts to thank the guests for coming. Now, traditionally, that would be the bride's family and the bride and groom and the groom's family as well. So if you'd had a church wedding, which traditionally is what would happen and you would go from your church to your wedding reception and before the guests entered the wedding reception there would be a line of the hosts the bride and groom etc and so forth and the guests would make their way along the line shaking everybody's hand and the host would say thank you very much for coming it's really lovely to see you blah 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 have a nice day that sort of thing and they would make their way into the wedding reception to enjoy the rest of the wedding if you didn't have a church ceremony, then you would do a receiving line from the drinks reception through to the wedding breakfast as people are about to go in and take their seats. Now, I think the main reason people don't do this as often is because it takes so long. Think 30 seconds per guest and obviously times that by the amount of guests you've got. It takes ages. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a lovely tradition, but it does take a long time and people just end up queuing. So sometimes it's worth looking at alternatives. If you've got your heart set on doing a receiving line, then go for it, absolutely go for it. It is a lovely tradition. And if you're looking for a really traditional wedding, how many times can I say tradition in one sentence? Then go for that one. If your parents are hosting the wedding as well, then that's something that they've probably experienced a lot more and might request you do. I, however, like to give an alternative to all my clients. I think I've nicknamed it the wedding breakfast walk around. As a bride and groom, you want to thank all your guests for coming, but you might not want them queuing up for 30, 40 minutes to get in to sit down to eat and they're blooming starving. Basically, as a bride and groom, you will be sat at a table and your table will be served food first. Then the caterers will go around each table and serve food to each of the tables. There will be a bit of a break in between you having your starters, for example, and your mains. So it's really nice to be able to then get up, stretch your legs and pop around to say two or three tables and speak to your guests as they're eating. They might have actually finished by the time you get there. Thank them for coming and see if they're having a nice time. Then in the next break between courses, you can do the same with a couple of other tables. And then by the end of the wedding breakfast, you've thanked all your guests that are there already. Then when it comes to the evening, you don't have to do it. You can just thank the evening guests for coming if you've got evening guests, and then you can enjoy yourself. You can get on the dance floor and you can party. Okay, this is where I get confused, but we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it, and I'll probably pop a picture up. So, wedding breakfast, top table. Where do people sit traditionally? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna get so lost. Here we go. Okay, I'm going from, we're looking at the table as a guest, I'm gonna go from the far left to the far right. I'm going like deer in headlights here now because I'm really trying to like focus in my mind as to who sits where. Far left we have maid of honor, father of the groom, mother of the bride, groom, bride, mother of the groom, no, father of the bride, mother of the groom, best man. Yes, got there, uh, yeah. What about if your parents are divorced? <laughs> mind blown, okay. If the bride's parents are divorced, you would pop her stepfather on the far left next to the maid of honor and the stepmother on the far right next to the best man. If the groom's parents are divorced, you would put the groom's stepmother in the second left and the stepfather second right. 
I'm gonna put some pictures up now because if you're anything like me, I have just got so confused. So here's a photo. Okay, are you still with me after that? Oh my God. Are there any traditions so far that you're like, oh my God, I do not want that. Or you're feeling like, yep, I am all over that. Put them in the comment box and let me know. So what happens after the wedding breakfast? Cake! One of my favorite parts of the day. So cake is obviously a tradition and Eating the cake symbolizes the first meal together as husband and wife. I don't really understand that one, to be honest, because they've just had the wedding breakfast, but that's the tradition and that's the meaning behind it, apparently. The bride usually holds the knife and the groom places his right hand on top of the brides and they usually cut the bottom tier at the back of the bottom tier and the groom will feed the bride a little bit of cake first and then vice versa. There you have it. Simple. That tradition pretty much happens at every wedding, unless people go for like a cheese tower. I'm a very big fan of the cheese flower, the cheese tower. You can still cut cheese though, can't you? You might have cupcakes, you might have a dessert station, in which case you might want to have a little cake still to cut. It's totally up to you, you don't have to do it. Another tradition with cake is that the top tier, the small top tier, is kept and frozen and brought out at your first child's christening. It's okay if it's fruit cake, you speak to your cake maker as to whether that's actually going to be nice freezing a, a sponge. Okay, first dance. So this one again happens at pretty much every wedding. First dance is between the bride and the groom. They will pick a song that means something to them, usually, and then they will dance together. And then there's another dance. There's the father of the bride and the bride. They have a little dance afterwards as well. And then usually you invite all your guests on the dance floor and everyone parties. But another tradition used to be that after the first dance and the father of the bride dance, the bride and groom would go. They would do the bouquet toss, we're gonna to talk about that now, and they would go off onto their honeymoon and leave the rest of the guests to party. We don't really do that anymore. I don't know anyone that's done, done that. So I'd be really interested to know if that's something that you plan on doing or if you've even been to a wedding where people do that. Or maybe it's just not a UK thing but I've never experienced that. When you're paying for a wedding and you've got all your guests together in one place, you wanna to stay to have the party. You don't wanna host it for other people and go away. Okay, so back to the bouquet toss. That is usually where the bride throws her bouquet to a group of the single women and their partners are usually left cowering in a corner waiting to find out if they're having to get married next. It's all a bit silly, but it's good fun at the same time and all the single women absolutely love it. However, if you've got an absolutely beautiful bespoke bouquet and you don't wanna throw it and give it away to somebody else, and maybe you're thinking of pressing it and drying it, then you can always have a smaller bouquet made up just for the bouquet toss. Or something I absolutely love, you can give the bouquet to the couple that have been married the longest. I just love that. Okay, my lovelies, so that is a lot of etiquette and a lot of traditions thrown at you in one. I hope you have found it helpful. I would love to know what you found good and what you think, mm, I don't want that, I'm not doing that. So make sure you comment below. Don't forget, if you want to be in a community of brides just like you that are on their planning journey, then hop on over to Facebook and join me and my secret society of brides. I'm in there every week doing trainings and I'm more than happy to let you in. So come on over. If you liked this video, give us a like and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next week.